atau Mr. Ikang yeah. itu? I'm sharing now. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Alright, the stage is yours. All right then. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to be here today. Uh, I, I faced a little bit of technical difficulty before coming in, but now I'm fine. I've just finished a class actually, and uh, I'll have about five minutes break and then jump into this uh, session. So let's go straight into uh, the talk today. Uh, the title is The Collaborative Practices of Industrial Design Profession. Now it sounds very complicated, but the session is all about uh, industrial design. Uh, if you are not very sure about what is industrial design, uh, this is a, a very good session that you can actually listen into and I'm able to share um, uh, whatever that I know to all of you. Is it good? Okay, um, people call me Yi Kang or you can search about me, Yi Kang Ui, uh, on the internet. Um, my former name is Ui Kong, so please call me Mr. Yi Kang or Yi Kang. Uh, my background is I graduated from um, Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, RMIT, Australia. I have about 20 plus years of experience in the design industry. <coughs> I used to run my own design consultancy, uh, one of the pioneer product design consultancy in uh, Malaysia. I've done more than 500 projects uh, in various industry and I've been teaching for more than 10 years now and I'm pursuing a PhD in uh, management, design and business at APU. Um, you can ask me how I actually get into industrial design later if we have time, right? So let's move on. These are some of my roads. You can see above there, there are some furniture design. Um, furniture is my love, but I don't have a chance to do furniture design until only the last few years. For the last 20 over years, most of my works are um, electronics and electricals. As you can see, there's a lot of tools, a lot of um, power tools, uh, electrical, electronic products here. Okay, and some of them are actually uh, hobbies. Uh, I design shoes, uh, then telecommunication products and speakers. And I also done some software designs um, interfaces. So you can see the, you know, it's wide scope. Um, you ask me, what do I specialize in? I will say that I'm specializing in industrial design and which you will learn what is a, the unique thing about industrial design. Okay, now the content for today roughly go through is uh, what is industrial design? I will go through design history. Don't worry, it's not a history lesson, just tiny little bit. And a day in a life with design, I will show you what industrial design uh, can do in, in our daily life. Uh, then I will uh, show you how to work with industry, you know, collaboration, the manufacturing arena. This might be a little bit heavy for some of you, but doesn't matter. We are, I have to go through it so that you can understand. Then what does an industrial designer do, the tools and trade? Uh, what do you learn if you come and uh, study industrial design and the career in industrial design? Are these all good, I think, I hope, good? Okay, now what is industrial design? If you do not know about industrial design, that's fine, because you know why? There's a gap between the industry and the design profession. Now, some people told me that, you know, my student asked me, sir, I don't see jobs offer in industrial design. I say, yes, most of them, uh, they do have jobs out there, but they, the industry doesn't know how to hire industrial designers. So they always turn up to be hiring uh, other profession like mechanical design. Okay, so uh, we will teach our students to search for these companies and uh, send a resume to them and uh, seek um, uh, opportunity instead of waiting for them to come to us. Uh, why there's a gap is got to do with the education system uh, in the Southeast Asia region. Uh, in Malaysia, we also have these problems and most people don't really know that there's an industrial designer exists. Okay, uh, so the definition of industrial design is uh, from the World Design Organization is a strategic problem solving process that drive innovation and build business success and lead to a better quality of life through innovation products, systems, services, and experiences. Now, what does that mean? Okay, that's, I'll show you an example that you can um, uh, understand. History lesson now, <laughs> a little bit. Industrial designer, before the industrial revolution, you know, we have now industrial revolution four, so I'm talking about industrial revolution one. Before the industrial revolution one, products were mostly made by laborers and hands. Okay, so when you have the uh, industrial revolution came the steam engine, things were made in a factory. So they set up a bigger automated factory. That means uh, you don't use labor and hands to do the products so much already. You use machine to produce them. 
Okay, so we can see that um, they form a factory production line. This is one of the early factory uh, production line setup. This is uh, from the Ford uh, model, you know, the Ford car. So this is how they actually uh, station and station, they put up the products. Okay, now in order for uh, the production line to set up, in order for the sub-assembly part to assemble together, all the design, okay, must be made into this. Okay, now this is an example of a car, okay, and you can see the parts that involve in putting together a car. Okay, now, so, to summarize it, so what does the industrial designer do? Before industrial revolution, there's no industrial designer. The industrial designer is specially set up to cater for mass production, okay? Because before you produce a product, uh, the industrial designer has to start visualizing what the product outlook will look like and uh, how are you going to actually produce this product uh, in the production line, okay? So I will... Uh, I will further elaborate along the way. I will show you uh, how the manufacturing arena works and where is industrial design and other engineers fits into the whole pictures later. Okay, let's move on. Uh, some fun facts. Uh, every human being is exposed to more than 70 products daily. 70 products. Uh, they are all designed by industrial designer. So you can see how important industrial designer is. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you a day in a life with design. I'm going to move from home to office and then to shopping. Okay. So, imagine early in the morning when you wake up. So, how do you wake up these days? Uh, you have an alarm clock, right? I'm not sure whether do you still use alarm clock, but most people use their handphone already. For myself, I don't use a handphone because I'm afraid of the frequency, um, you know, the electromagnetic frequency. So, I still use an alarm clock. And you can see when I search alarm clock on the internet. There's so many different design. Amazing, right? And every single design has to be designed by an industrial designer, okay? That's a problem with alarm clock, right? Now, if you are sharing a room with somebody and um, uh, you are going to work early and your partner is not going to work early, so the alarm clock is going to wake both of you. So in order to solve this problem, uh, there's a new product called Accuwave Socks. Okay, this is where um, when you set the alarm clock, uh, they, you don't hear the sound, but you can actually feel the vibration on the socks. So this is actually a better solution compared to an alarm clock, right? Now in this case, this is where the industrial design is bridging the software designer, the electronic engineer, and the fabric manufacturer together to form a new product. Okay? So, do away with the old alarm uh, clock and you will not have any problems uh, with your uh, spouse or your partners, you know, if you want to go to work early and uh, your partner is not working early, okay? And another problem in the morning, okay, uh, you do makeup and suddenly there's a phone ring. So what are you going to do? You're going to stop makeup or you're going to uh, pick out the phone? A better solution, maybe, an interactive mirror. Okay, and this is another uh, example where industrial design is working together with software engineers, hardware engineers, and interior designers together to come up with the new products. Okay. Next one, you brush your teeth every day, every morning. I brush my teeth every single meal, after every single meal. And you have so many different types of uh, uh, toothbrushes, right? And toothbrushes is actually one of the products that designed by industrial designer as well. And there are many, many different types of um, uh, toothbrushes out there, the electronic types. And this is where the industrial design is bridging the marketing department, the dentist, the medical physician, the electronic engineers, and the manufacturers together to make this product, okay? I'm going to show a more example, and this is an example during the lockdown. I'm not sure how it's uh, in Tunisia. I don't know whether, what is it called? Is it called LSSR? Over here, we call them MCO. Uh, it's like, uh, uh, it's we call it PSBB. A PSBB. Okay, fine. I'm not <laughs> sure how is it work over there, but over here is quite strict. So a lot of people kind of like stuck at home. Okay, so when you are all stuck at home together, you have to do work, learning, and playing all in a very small space. So this is a kind of like a problem, okay? 
Now, I always say uh, the COVID-19, even though it's uh, uh, not a very happy case that happened, uh, a disaster actually, uh, that happened to the whole world, but when it comes to businesses, when it comes to as an industrial designer, you have a lot of opportunity in there because you are able to come up with a privacy chair. You know? I mean, maybe this is the time that we push out the privacy chair. So this is another area where uh, industrial designer is bridging interior designers, sofa fabricator, wood manufacturer, and metal fabricator together. Okay. Um, another privacy space, you know, uh, working together with metal fabricator and textile fabricator to form something like that. Okay, I'm going to show you some example. I'm going to go through them very quickly. Uh, what, where are the opportunities and what are the industrial designer can do? You know, bought at home during MCO. Okay, so what do you do? Maybe a multi-functional table. Okay, uh, this is uh, interior designer again working with the uh, wood product manufacturer and interior designer to come up with a, a furniture design. Okay. Turning a door into a ping pong table. Okay. And you spend a lot of time at home, so you probably do gardening. Okay, uh, this is where it brings botanists, permaculture, sustainable scientists, electronic and electrical engineer and manufacturing together to make a product like this. Okay. And you spend a lot of time at home with your pets as well. Okay. And this is a range of products. There's a, a big range of products that you can actually think of. Now, personally, I have done quite a lot of uh, product design for um, an aquarium, uh, home aquarium. So industrial designer can also design a product like this. Yeah. And door handle is one of the big problems when it started, right? You know, everybody is so scared of touching the door. Okay. So they have temporary solution out there. But all these things right, actually prompted us to ask questions, you know, and uh, this question, it leads to solution, potential solution, uh, some uh, temporary solution over here. And as you can see, all these are new products, new idea. And what does that mean to the economy or to the business? It means uh, new opportunity, new market, new products. Okay. Lead button is another one. Okay. Go crazy over here. Uh, I I still I, I'm I'm still using my um, I don't use my finger to touch the leaf so far. I, I use my key to uh, press the leaf button at the moment. <laughs> uh, public spacing. Okay, uh, all these are actually just to show you that um, these are the areas that maybe one day might have to change uh, permanently. Uh, at the moment, we are temporarily using this system, but one day we might have to look into a permanent solution. Hopefully, in the school, we do not need to wear like this to go to school every day. Okay, um, this is uh, happening in Shanghai. Uh, but incidentally, uh, this idea is not new, you know, and it's, it's done a long time ago during the Song Dynasty. Uh, the emperor wanted uh, their, uh, all the people that come into the meetings, right, uh, to all the officials to stop talking to each other. So the, he designed uh, this uh, flap to keep them apart, you see. So social distancing happening in Song Dynasty. Okay. Um, as I say, is this going to be a long-term solution? I, I hope not, uh, but if this is going to be a long-term solution, then industrial designer is needed to come up with a solution, okay? You can see there's a lot of tape, okay? And we are uh, already into a second phase, I would say. A second phase will be looking into a long-term solution already. And uh, we have design competition coming up, looking into designing public ventures that is suitable to have um, a decent, uh, a, you know, uh, this social distancing uh, built in there. So you might not see this in the future. You might be seeing a new type of furniture. And sanitizing, okay, is becoming a part of a lifestyle, especially when you go shopping. And, uh, retail shopping is a real challenge. Um, you have to do away with retail people uh, selling uh, products to you. Uh, solution is there. Uh, this is an uh, example from Japan. They are testing it out to see whether it will work. Uh, automated retail shopping. Now, all these right, are actually uh, new opportunity to me. These are all um, an area that where industrial designer can come up with a solution and works with other profession to complete the product. Okay.
there are many, many of these uh, examples. I'm just going to flip them through quickly. I, I don't think this is anything new to you already. Now, change is a hit, okay? So before we do the changes, I'm going to talk about the manufacturing arena a little bit. Now, the term OEM, ODM, and OBM might not be familiar to you, but if you are uh, into the manufacturing industry, then you understand what is the meaning of OEM. It's called Original Equipment Manufacturing. Now, I'm, I'm going to base on my uh, sharing from my experience that is uh, happening in Malaysia. Now, in the 1980s, um, Malaysia just uh, started to bring in foreign investors and uh, they have foreign company coming in over here to open up big factories. And these big factories, for example, they make uh, electrical products. And these electrical products need a lot of parts to be put together. So they subcontract to many, many local manufacturers to make the plastic part, the metal part, the PCB part, and then they bring them all together and they assemble for the foreign company. Okay, and this type of business, right, is called original equipment manufacturer. Why? Because you are manufacturing for a foreign brand. It's not for your own brand. Foreign brands could be Sony, could be uh, some other brand. Okay, so the next step to move in, right, is original design manufacturing. That means you are offering original design manufacturing for people. For example, one of the company that is doing very successful uh, in this area is Foxconn. They design handphone for Apple. Okay, Apple, they don't design their own uh, handphone these days, the, the physical part. They only do the user experience side and the software side. The physical outlook and the mechanical part all subcontract to an ODM manufacturer. Okay, and um, the next stage will be the OBM, own brand manufacturing. For example, if you are um, Sony, or if you are a Logitech, or if you are maybe Oppo phone or other phone, you design your own you for and you manufacture for your own. Okay. Now, in order to move from OEM to OBM, it needs uh, time and um, evolve, evolution. And uh, one of the important thing, right, is actually to have the, uh, the expertise. You need to have uh, people in uh, manufacturing, in design, uh, uh, in marketing, especially for OBM. Now I'm going to move to the next slide so that you can understand better. Uh, this is a better slide, I think. Now this is a very good picture to represent the manufacturing arena. On my left-hand side, you have original business manufacturing. On the middle and the right-hand side, you have OEM and ODM. Now in stage one, product development, this is where the mechanical engineering and the industrial designer comes in. Okay, And uh, they produce the product. And you can see that they assemble them uh, and then they put it into the box and then they send it out. They do the logistic. So most countries in the Southeast Asia are very well versed with this type of OEM, ODM business. We are very good at it already because we can produce product. Okay. But we do not know how to move into OBM so much. Okay. This is where the new product and the new market come in. This is where the marketing the industrial design is one of the very important uh, person and the production team must come together. Okay, I think predominantly marketing and industrial designer uh, should be here. Now, if you have a pyramid system, right, and uh, industrial design and the marketing people is always on the top of the chain because the industrial designer will work with the marketing people to know what the market wants, what the user wants, interpret that idea, sketch it into a design, and then they come out with all the design, then only they pass it to the product development team. Okay, now traditionally, most Southeast Asia business are still in the OEM and ODM business. Now we need to move up the value chain. Okay, now this is to show you uh, the, what is the meaning of the manufacturing uh, value change. I know that some of you might be um, not very familiar with all this, uh, but just bear with me for a while. I need to kind of like explain uh, why Design is important. Now, the Sanshi smile curve, Sanshi, who is Sanshi, by the way? Sanshi is the co-founder and honorary chairman of Acer. He thinks that we should uh, be moving upwards, okay? Because Taiwan started as a manufacturing uh, company, manufacturer, they only do manufacturing. So they are at the bottom, okay? They are at the bottom of the tier. And when you are at the bottom, right, you make the least money. That means your profit margin is very low. 
so they they think uh, he thinks that you know you have to move up the value chain. So as you can see, OEM become ODM, and the top one will be owning your own brand. In order to own your own brand, you must have a R and D, a strong research and development team, continuously to come out with a product. Okay. Now I think that Indonesia has very big potential. Um, I will talk about it a little bit later. Why, um, you know, why Indonesia? I think is, is a lot of uh, big potential there. Okay, now let's go into this. So, as an industrial designer, what does an industrial designer do, and what will you learn uh, in the design courses? There's a tool of the trade. Okay. Uh, let me see. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, how I think in order to to know how do we work, you have to know how do we think. Uh, designer think like this. Uh, sometimes you know very messy, and then suddenly pop, you have a good idea. Sometimes you take a, a break, and then some some suddenly idea come. Okay, but actually there is a way uh, to develop and uh, create ideas. I will show you later. Now, before I go in a little bit more uh, on what we do, I have to uh, explain this. A design to me is not an art. Uh, many people say that, oh, you're doing industrial design, you are an artist. Yes, yes and no. Um, I, I kind of like have to be very clear over here that design is different from art. If you are an artist, you draw something that you like. But if you are a designer, you are doing something what the customer like. Okay, I will show you a little bit more. Uh, what do you mean by customers? Uh, customer is not just the end user, okay? To me, design is a balance of rational and logic design and emotional and aesthetic. Okay, on the left hand side, you see uh, things like design for manufacturing, design for assembly, design for marketing, functional design, and user requirement. Now, all this is logical and rational uh, thinking behind. There's there's a method to it. Uh, it's not art. Okay, this. Design for manufacturing, for example, let's say if I design a plastic product, I need to understand how a plastic is being uh, processed and manufactured. So in the school, you will learn a little bit of uh, plastic injection molding and you learn a little bit of uh, different material. Okay, and then you also need to understand when I design a mouse, how am I going to put the mouse top cover and the bottom cover coming together and sandwich the PC report in the middle. This is where you learn about design for assembly. And this to me is not art. This to me is uh, is rational, is logical thinking. Okay, the emotional aesthetic is where uh, it's a big subjective where you learn what is beautiful. You know, uh, how do you actually like to touch something, see something, hear something, and this emotional design is also another. Um, I would say, not so tangible. Okay, it's a little bit of intangible, but you can actually study them. So at the end of the day, an industrial designer must balance art and you know the aesthetic side i would say aesthetic side and the engineering side okay these two have to be together um so if you are not very strong in maths and you're not very strong in art you are a perfect uh, combination i'm just kidding okay <laughs> okay let, let's move on okay okay uh, so what do you learn inside the design courses um, design principle is one of the things that we learn uh, okay we teach you how uh, what is how to create a, a balanced design, a proportionally pleasing design. Uh, when you look at it, right, you will not uh, have aversion to turn away. You will like the design. You know what color is suitable, what material is suitable. So all these things you you go through that, okay. And you also need to uh, study design history. You need to know how um, the contextual uh, part of it, uh, why certain things happen at a certain time, and why things are happening. Uh, the way it is okay now design happen with a reason there's always a reason behind design it doesn't just happen like that okay and uh, creative thinking process is definitely a must uh, you will look we will look into creative thinking analytical thinking critical thinking okay and of course we will do divergent thinking and uh, convergent thinking and one of the very famous thinking is called the design thinking okay this is where Remember the very messy uh, lines, and at the end of the day, there's one straight line. Now, this is uh, the systemization of the designer's mind. This is what we think, how we think. Okay, we will go through this process in every single project that you are doing, and we kind of like uh, groom you 
uh, to become a good design thinker. Okay, I'm not going to go into details because of the time. Uh, in order to run this, you can run a two, three day courses just for design thinking itself. Okay, and then we learn other skills like observational skill and consumer behavior. Now, before uh, big data, now these days, right, you go into um, analytics, you go and get the data and uh, you want to know uh, 25 years old to 30 years old, what color do they like? You can just go to uh, internet and you probably may be able to find a data to tell you what color they like. But the, the strongest thing that I think a designer uh, should process right, is observational skill. Okay, and in the past, right, I spent a lot of time in the shopping center just by doing people watching. Okay, so this is a soft skill that we learn and uh, then you learn to notice, you learn to uh, observe uh, how do people do something and from there only you'll be able to transfer the needs. Okay? We, it's all very tangible, we can transfer this intangible into tangible. Okay, that's the skill uh, of an industrial designer. And definitely you have to learn marketing. Okay, uh, whatever things that you design, you have to be able to know how to sell them. Okay. And then uh, this is the question that people always ask me, uh, do you need to be a good uh, at drawing to study design? Okay, uh, the answer is yes and no. Okay, myself, I don't really sketch very well. Okay, I, I can't really draw human figure. I'm a more uh, abstract artist, but I'm very strong with my 3D CAD modeling. So most of my job are done uh, using CAD, but a lot of my students are actually sketching better than me. Okay, uh, so if you don't have a drawing uh, skill, you do not need to worry about that because you, when you come into the school, we have foundation classes to groom you. And this is where you will draw and draw and draw and you know, day, day in, day out. And you uh, groom you up, uh, you know, and we teach you how to uh, draw properly. And uh, our, our sketching skill, we have uh, two types of sketching skill. We have um, manual sketching, that means using hand. We still look into uh, using hand to sketch and do rendering. And we also use computer to sketch or digital sketching. And if you come to our school, you'll be able to see all this Cintiq um, tablet sitting there for you to actually play around with this. Okay, so this is actually um, uh, the future. Okay, but before we move into the digital sketching, you still have to learn the basic sketching. So we will teach you uh, from the basic uh, manual sketching. And then the things that you need to uh, learn is um, handmade mock-up manual sample making. Um, industrial designer, um, you, if, if you want to become an industrial designer, you, one of the skills that probably uh, you need to have is actually a hands-on skill. I'm not very good at it, uh, yeah, I, but some people are very good at this, okay? Uh, I, I'm not very good at it. I, my, my model will not look so beautiful. But again, as I say, I'm very strong in CAT. Okay, I'm very, very strong in my 3D CAT. Okay, now all students are required to work in a workshop. Okay, then if you study industrial design, you have to go into the workshop to make sample because uh, either you do furniture design, product design, or transport design, you need to get your hands dirty down to the workshop to produce a sample for your exam, okay? Uh, when you talk about exam, we don't have exam, okay, but we have coursework examination. That means we will look at your project. How do you fare in your project? And in the project, we will look into all these processes and the sample is one of the tangible um, result that we evaluate, the sketching, and the idea, the creativeness, you know, okay. And we will learn uh, 3D CAD software. This is an area that I'm very strong uh, in it. So I won't be able to draw uh, very well, but when it comes to 3D CAD, I will be able to model things very nicely and I can turn them around. I can see everything that I want. So uh, for the last 20 over years, most of my 500 over projects, I did it using uh, 3D CAD, okay. Uh, Semi-technical knowledge, uh, design for manufacturing and design for assembly is something that you need to learn. Some people find it a little bit uh, difficult, but uh, no worry, we will have uh, uh, the techniques to uh, groom you from uh, beginner until uh, advanced stage. And we also study ergonomics because everything that we design, we are designing for human usage. You know, let's say human usage, the hand, how big is the hand? How are you going to hold the mouse? 
whether the bottle is uh, comfortable for you to uh, hold or not. Is it too big or not? Is this uh, all? All these are actually the uh, under ergonomics. Okay. And a very important skill that I I, I think uh, is a soft skill. Okay, the presentation skill, the communication skill, the team working skill, and the report writing skill. Okay, these are the things that we will uh, go through together with you. Mr. Ikang, sorry, the mic is muted. Let me just unmute. Ask you to unmute. Okay, okay. can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, what did yeah, I press? Yeah. <laughs> I press something and then I'm gone. Okay, yeah. now I have to go back to um, share screen, I believe. Yes. Uh, um, I'm not familiar with the you can uh, just, panel. Uh, open actually. the slide, so. Open the slide. Yeah, open the slide. Show sure. The screen is hey. uh, in front of us. Can you see? Yeah, but it's still need, not in a full mode. Okay, now perfect. Okay, now coming over here to study overseas, right? You also have um, a lifetime experience, cultural exchange, and international networking, which is very important these days. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the next will be uh, career in design. So let's say if you um, if you study industrial design, so what where can you work? Well, what what can you do? Now the GDP growth at the moment is not very uh, good uh, for two o two. Uh, 20, uh, but uh, 2021 is going up, that's what they say. So even though the economics is not doing very well, but when you talk about design, design is always designed for the future. Whatever that industrial designer do or a new market uh, needs to be opened up, right, is going to be only two to three years down the road. So you are actually looking forward. So the economy will eventually go up again. So it's better for you to jump in now, okay? Uh, hang on, uh. let me move to the next slides. Uh, there's a, a Mandarin word, Chinese word here called Xianji. Uh, literally translated is called danger opportunity. From this pandemic time, which is a very dangerous time, uh, not a very a good time, you are able to find opportunity. Okay? And there's a lot of opportunity in there. If you look at the, this is one of the Indonesia's uh, top 10 export. I think I get it from, uh, I think a bit old, already all the yellow highlighted one are potential area where industrial designer can contribute their ideas okay there's still a lot of rooms uh, to improve okay and now where will you find the work okay now on the left hand corner you'll be able to definitely work in a multinational uh, manufacturing company okay or you can work in a small medium industry as long as they are doing manufacturing you might have a chance to actually work with them okay and furniture is one of them packaging design uh, automation you know those people who do uh, setting up uh, the factory line sometimes they do need industrial uh, designer okay by the way when it comes to automation Industrial designer is different from industrial engineer. We are not industrial engineer. Industrial engineer only study uh, on the production uh, matters. But industrial designer is the one that combine arts, the aesthetic side, the user requirement, and the technical side together. Okay? So we are different from industrial engineer. Okay? And if you are, uh, then the next one will be IoT products. If you are working, uh, if you are uh, IoT products, you need to have an industrial designer to work with you. Then you can work in a software gaming and movie studio. Now, in a movie studio, industrial designer helps to make props. Okay, all those uh, set. If you are doing a science fiction story, you definitely need that. Okay, and you can also work in a digital advertising, uh, F&B, design consultancy, uh, PR, a large uh, service company. And uh, lastly, I always encourage my students to go into this area to be an entrepreneur yourself. Okay, now, if you are studying design, uh, in regardless of any uh, design, I think industrial designer is one of the good example. You, you do not need to work, uh, wait for the job to come to you. You can actually go out there and uh, offer your service. 
Okay, so that is a advantage. Just like myself, I worked for one and a half years, and then I started my own consultancy, and it lasted for fifteen years. Okay, and uh, this is kind of like uh, people ask me. So, how do you actually climb the corporate ladder? Now, there are uh, different types of designer out there. Okay, depending on uh, yourself, some of the students are actually very good with the skill. Um, for example, uh, software skill. Okay, they are very strong in, uh, for example, 3D solid work, and they can become a specialist designer. Okay, when you become a specialist designer, you see in, in, a, in a company, you, uh, you need a lot of specialist designer. So if you're strong in Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, strong in uh, SolidWorks, Maya, and even strong in prototype making, these are all under the specialist uh, designer role. Okay, now you can work as a specialist designer for a few years and depending on your own uh, liking, some of the people uh, are very good in uh, uh, dealing with people. Uh, they are very strong in EQ, uh, they are very strong in uh, time management, project coordination. Then they can move to the next level, become a lead designer or a thinker or coordinator. Okay, and then of course, the, uh, when you have more experience, then you become a design manager. Okay, so this is how uh, you actually start. Now, there are uh, designers that I know of uh, for 20 over years, they do not want to climb the corporate ladder. They just want to be a specialist designer. So they are, uh, they are very strong with whatever they are doing for you know, 20 over years and become specialists in that area or expert. Okay. All right. Now, to me, a good designer should be able to connect the dot. Now, what we are trying to do here in the school, instead of just grooming you to become very good with the tools and know how to use the software, we want you to be able to uh, become a thinker designer. A thinker designer is able to uh, you know, see from uh, big pictures and connect uh, the different issues and the different problem and the different solution together. This is why I always say that uh, industrial designer is the bridge uh, between the different team you know, and uh, as you can see the chart over here, uh, this is a chart that I use for a very long time. Um, this is what we are offering. Um, designer don't work, don't work in a vacuum. Designer always work with the manufacturing team and the marketing team, okay? And uh, when, when you work as an industrial designer, you have to be very flexible. You have to be able to work with all these different uh, industry. And when you come and study to become an industrial designer, you will be able to learn a little bit of all these things and you'll be able to see the connections at the end of the day. And this is what we, we strive uh, to become a good industrial designer. You have to be able to connect the dots, okay? All right. Um, I'm pretty much at the end of my slides already. I uh, rushed through it quickly. Hopefully it's not too fast. Uh, so industrial design, to me, I think the opportunities are everywhere. Uh, there's so many industries out there that can actually work with an industrial designer. If you don't see the job offering now, it's because I think the industry doesn't know how to hire us. So don't be afraid. You know, we will show you how to actually approach the industry and do presentation and kind of like educate the industry. I have been educating the industry to use and work with industrial design for the last 20 over years. I'm still doing that at the moment. This is why one of the reasons why I uh, come into the school uh, to become an educator, okay. All right then, uh, quickly show you some of the examples. These are some, uh, I, I quickly uh, I go through the internet and found some examples. These are Indonesian uh, furniture designer. These are their products. Okay, and it, I believe that Indonesia can produce uh, very good uh, furniture pieces and they can uh, they have the export uh, quality. Okay, and I know that you produce your own train and sell to Bangladesh. Uh, this is amazing. Um, the look of the train is the job of an industrial designer. Okay, and the interior of the train is also the job of an industrial designer. Okay, and I know that you produce uh, fantastic uh, military products. Okay, um, the look and the interior design and uh, the functional uh, way, how do you actually drive this uh, vehicle you know, under a, a, a very uh, intense situation is also the job of an industrial designer. You can actually improve uh, that, you see. 
and the camouflage you can actually study the color of the environment and you design the camouflage of the uh, the fatigue you know the, the, the color fatigue on, on the vehicle and on the army dress is all the job of an industrial designer by the way yeah okay and i know that um, the halal cosmetic is uh, a fast uh, uh, i think it's a fast growing uh, industry in Indonesia. So there's a lot of uh, things that an industrial designer can do. You can create a brand, a packaging, and uh, the user experience. How do you actually use a product? How do you actually unbox a product? How do you actually display them? These are all the job of an industrial designer. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm done here. I'm, I'm here at a Q&A session now. Uh, over to you. This is, yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Ika. Uh, before we continue with the Q&A session, uh, I would like to uh, inform you that uh, if you haven't filled the um, attendance form, uh, please do so because we are going to uh, send the uh, recording uh, session to your email. So I put it in the uh, uh, chat box. So please uh, continue then. Uh, if you have um, questions, uh, please ask, or you can type it in the chat box. Thank you. Any question? Any, yeah. Anybody want to know how I get into industrial design? <laughs> yeah, maybe you can share. <laughs> you can share a bit first. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I... I got no idea that I can do industrial design. Uh, to tell the truth, um, I I was a lost soul. I got no idea what I wanted to do, and I tried many different schools. I tried to become an accountant, and I tried to become an engineer like my uh, uh, brother. So accountant is like my auntie, you know. I want to follow her. So I tried this and tried that, and eventually I met a very good counselor, and this counselor looked into uh, my problem and. The first thing is uh, he checked and I, I don't do drugs and I'm a very good boy, he said. <laughs> okay, so no problem here. So what, what went wrong? So definitely must be studying something wrong. So uh, from there, he introduced me to uh, industrial design. And the first time that I know about industrial design, it changed my life. I, I started uh, focusing on my, uh, on my work. Okay, I mean, when I started uh, industrial design, uh, the first year was very tough for me because I don't have a drawing skill, drawing background. Uh, but because I love the job so much, I love uh, being an industrial designer so much, I put in a lot of time to, to uh, do my work. So it took me one year to become good in all the basic uh, tools. And from the second year onwards, right, I won uh, an award, a design award, and from there, it changed my life. Until now, I never stop. Okay, uh, for after 20 over years, I'm still in industrial design. After I've done, I, you know, my folio say 500 over projects, I'm still an uh, industrial designer. I cannot do any other thing except design. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. So, it means never stop learning. Yeah, never right. stop. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, here we have Aiko. Uh, Aiko uh, told me that she interested in taking um, fashion design. So maybe Aiko, do you have a question about industrial designs or if you still confused um, about what will industrial design do in work, you can ask here. Thank you. Yes, may I know Aiko from which background? Great, uh, maybe high school or graduate? Uh, Aiko is uh, now still in year 12. A year 12, all right. Yeah, Aiko, you can yeah, ask any questions. Ask any questions. Ask. In any language, you'll be fine. Bahasa <laughs> or uh, English, English. Because, um, yeah, me and Clarence and others is actually Indonesian. So we can uh. understand. <laughs> Jangan malu-malu, Aiko. Jadi nggak kaku-kaku ya? Ya, yeah, di sini um, kita sesinya santai aja sih. Nah, lebih santai. Jadi teman-teman, if you have question, or if you want us to discuss something, 
then you can just unmute okay. or chat in a chat box. Uh, Marinda, there's a one question from uh, Jocelyn. Uh, she Michelle. said that, yeah, she said that what are the requirements to take this degree in university? Minimum score or certain subjects should be taken. Thank you, Jocelyn. All right. Thank you, Jocelyn. Maybe in terms of the uh, qualification, if you are from uh, grad 12 students, we need minimum uh, 70 in your final result and IELTS 5.0 uh, for this industrial design. But you need to submit your portfolio. So later our uh, academic leader will uh, assess the document, I mean the result and everything. And also uh, you need to done the entry test for the industrial design. Uh, there's a test and interview. Not that difficult, it's okay, don't worry. <laughs> so that's all uh, our uh, requirement to enter uh, the industrial design degree. Maybe uh, Mr. Uh, maybe, uh, um, Mr. Ikang, uh, share, uh, maybe you can share something that uh, if let's say the student, uh, do they need the high level of drawing skill or they must be really, really good in drawing then only can join industrial design or how? Um, Any specific as, requirement for the degree? As I share just now, I, I myself cannot draw. If I share my sketching uh, to you, right, you will be scared and then you don't believe <laughs> that I have done 500 over projects. Okay, <laughs> but I have a lot of imaginations. Okay, if I draw, if, I, if you want to categorize my drawing, I'm an abstract uh, artist. Uh, abstract means I have a lot of imagination. I can you know, think of crazy, crazy idea. Uh, then I cannot draw it out. I can only have rough idea in my mind, but I transfer that idea. I can use model making. I can use uh, CAD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you are good with sketching, you, you see, all of us have some sketching skill. All of us. And that is why a lot of people misunderstand that saying that design is very easy to study. Yes, design is easy to study. So if you have a little bit of a sketching skill, when you come into the school, well, the school will groom you. Okay, we have oh. methods. Okay, I, I, and I, I, this is not because I'm teaching in APU, because I also taught in the other school, and I can tell you they have a very good basic. Okay, their students can draw very well, and they have a very good base. Uh, you know, for, to train a good industrial designer. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so, uh, Marinda, sorry. Yeah. If the student comes from O level, and you say O level, so what is the pathway? All right. Uh, Clarence, maybe you can answer yeah. this question? Sure. Uh, okay. So it actually depends to the, what is it, uh, to the program that actually the students would like to take. So if they are looking specifically into this uh, area, industrial design, then they can pursue for our diploma, diploma in design and media. It will require uh, three credits in at least three subjects. All right, so any subject it will do as, as long as uh, is it, it is credit, C and above. But let's say if the student are still, let's say uh, it's still, uh, what is it, uh, unsure about what program they would like to take, they can consider taking our foundation level. So they, that will require a five C, five credits and above for the foundation programs. Okay, usually lots of students, they often ask about this, like what's the difference between foundation and diploma is that foundation is actually a flexible pathway for students who are still unsure who would like to take what program in their degree. So for example, the students would like to take design, would like to take a computing, would like to take business. Okay, let's just join foundation first, get, uh, what is it, uh, learn everything and uh, at the same time, look which one is your strength, which one is your weaknesses, and then decide and take one for your degree. Meanwhile, for diploma, it is very much focused. So that's why uh, we are directing the students to into the program. For example, into industrial design, into animations, into visual effects. We already have that certain pathway. Yeah. So if a student uh, get from, uh, sorry, uh, start from foundation level, exactly, uh, how long is the duration of study until the student finishes? the Okay, bachelor? in terms of the durations, uh, both program will be, I mean, in total, it will be still the same. Foundation, it is one year. Diploma is two years. However, after you finish your foundations, you'll go to the first year of degree. So three years, total is four years. For diploma, you will go straight into the level two or year two. So you, you'll have uh, four years as well. 
Okay, so in terms of the duration, it will be still the same. Just the difference in terms of the requirement, in terms of the focus of the program. Okay, uh, now we have a question from uh, Ms. Evie. So she asked, what is the biggest achievement from APU students for industrial design program? What is the biggest, what is the biggest achievement? From APU yeah. students in industrial design. From APU students in industrial design. I am not very clear about the question. What do you mean okay. by biggest achievement? It's like uh, the project that our students already made, which is uh, in, the, in, the, in the industry. The achievement, uh, like maybe like a proton uh, invectus is one of the, our biggest achievement yeah. as well. Yeah, okay, you want to talk about that. Um, the students are already, um, I think many of them already being employed uh, in a different line. Okay, and um, achievement, I would say, uh, yes, uh, there have been uh, a few uh, good uh, design competition. Okay, and one of them I cannot uh, announce yet because we have an NDA sign. So you have to wait until September, then you will be able to see that they will announce. Uh, this is a pretty a big deal. We have won an international uh, design competition. Yeah. No. So, yeah, if you ask me, then, yeah, I, uh, if you, this is what you want to know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, our students are uh, really good in the competition as well. So, we join yes. a lot of competition. Yep. And some of their projects also, uh, like, for example, uh, Proton Invictus, we have yep. uh, joined competition from uh, what we call that one, the name the of RB. the competition. Uh, DRB, yeah. Mm. yeah. So we won the first place uh, for our first batch student in transport mm. design. Yep. Mm. Okay. Uh, moving on. Is there any questions? Oh, sorry. I want to remind you uh, again uh, for you who haven't filled the um, attendance form, please do so. The link is on the chat box. Yes. So, any other question? Anything, the any other question? Yes. Me, Mrs. Lina, do you have question? Maybe they are shy. Oh, this is from, from, from <laughs> Jocelyn Michelle again. So Jocelyn asks, what subject should we take for the O-level IGCSE? Are there any certain subjects that we should take? Okay. okay. All right. Uh, I will answer this question. Sure. So, uh, it depends on the program that you want to join first. So, if let's say you want to join uh, design, any subject uh, you can take, like let's say uh, maybe design, business, or a science program, any program, as long as you can score a minimum three credits to diploma, five credits to foundation. So, there is no specific subject uh, that you need, you need to take. It depends on the program. But if, let's say, you want to take IT, computing uh, program, then you need to take uh, mathematics. For design, there is no specific uh, subject that you need to take. Hmm. Right? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, don't forget that we will send you the list of the questions along with the answer to your email. So don't forget to fill in the form. <laughs> Okay, uh, next question. Is there okay, any, any question? question? Maybe from Radhi Anas. Maybe you can also share your academic background, your qualification. Or Grace. You Grace, do you have question, Grace? Yeah. Are you still there, guys? <laughs> 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 so. I just worry you guys are not there, actually. Yeah. Uh, Okay, um, okay, uh, one question for me. Um, do you have uh, like a scholarship for undergraduate students or foundation students? Okay, uh, scholarship. Uh, yep. Yeah, we do offer um, APU Merit Scholarship for a specific uh, qualification. So for example, uh, from Indonesian curriculum, in Indonesian qualification, uh, we offer up to 30% scholarship. It depends on the academic result of the students. So if let's say students from grade 12 can score minimum 80, then uh, they can uh, entitle for 15% scholarship. 
85, uh, 20% scholarship, and 30, uh, so, sorry, 95, you can get 30% uh, scholarship. And this scholarship will be deducted from uh, your course fee every year. Yeah, Clarence, share the screen so you can see, see if you yeah. are uh, in a, using Indonesian uh, qualification, so you can follow this. But if, let's say, some of you are from O-level students, we also offer a scholarship for all level qualification. Maybe Clarence will share the screen. We need okay. minimum four A's for the all level students. But this scholarship is actually only for Indonesian students. We, we offer oh, uh, okay. for those who score four A's minimum. Because for other international students, they need minimum six A's. So is that automatically so, applied? Yeah. Uh, no, depends no, 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 on... The, uh, there is so means oh, there is. Uh, students. Yeah, students need to apply earlier actually. Okay. So we have opened two times uh, registration. First, uh, we call it like early admission. Then in this early admission registration, student can secure one seat for the scholarship. So this is scholarship see. for all level students. Okay. Okay. So if let's say uh, students can get 10% scholarship, it's actually for four years study, one year in uh, foundation, three years in degree, or Two years in uh, diploma, diploma, two years in degree, yeah. So it's every year, the scholarship. So it's like just need uh, to study hard and score a higher result, then you can entitle for the scholarship. Okay, okay? thank you for the explanation. And uh, next question, since we are now hit more than an hour, so probably you have uh, something to do. So if there's no question, I will uh, wrap this webinar. Uh, we will going to send you the information um, delivered here to your email.